So let's get started with graphing P6S curves in Excel. So one of the things we want to start with is why bother? Why do we need these F S curves? Well, S curves are a really great tool for seeing how work is being planned out over a series of time periods. So we can see if we're ramping up with resources really quickly, that might help us with our procurement, that might you know, give us lots of information about how fast we need to mobilize. Um, we can also see, like in this graph, we can see periods where we have nothing going on. This is uh, my electrical work. So we can plan for those things. You know, this filters into cash flow, it filters into um, resource management, and uh, it's a general, it's, it's a widely accepted curve that's used everywhere. So here we've actually got two things going on. We've got the histogram, the bars in the back, and then we've got the S-curve over top. Now you can do this sort of thing right in P6. Um, however, there's some limitations to it. Okay, so we do have more power in Excel. Okay, so here's our setup. Here's our process, rather. First, we need to do a little bit of setup in P6, okay, to make sure that we can then extract the data properly. Okay, and I'll show you a quick trick for that. Then we're going to sort of pick what bits we want to actually graph, and then we'll go ahead and build the graphs, okay? And there's some tips throughout this whole thing, embedded through this whole thing, so let's get started. So, okay, so I'm making this really easy for you by picking a project that you all have, if you have access to that um, test database that comes with P6. When you install P6, you often get you know, the sample data. And I've opened up here the EC501 Haytang Corporate Park. So I'll show you where that sits in your, in your database. This is pretty much a fresh database. And if you come down here into the engineering and construction, one of the sample projects that comes with P6. Okay, so we've opened that up. Now, as you can see, we've got some progress a little bit. Okay, and um, one of the reasons I picked this project is that it is well resource loaded. So if we go into many of the activities, there's lots of resourcing going on. Okay, now let's see how we're going to get the data out of P6. Lots of different ways to get data out of P6, but today we're going to do sort of the easy way. We're going to be using this screen here, the resource assignment screen, and you can get to that screen by the little man with the bar behind his head here, resource assignments. Now, if you haven't, a lot of people haven't played with the resource assignment screen too much, and I'll just tell you, here we have an activity, and then underneath we have the resource of the activity. In on the resource assignments screen, we can do just the opposite. Here we have the resource, and then under the resource we have the activities that the resource is assigned to. So it's like we're flipping that relationship backwards. Okay, so we things here are organized by resource. Okay, so that's one of the nice things about this screen is that you can um, see for a resource what are they assigned to, and what dates they're working with. Now, over on the right-hand side, this is the data that we're actually going to graph. And you can pick what fields you want to graph by simply right-clicking over here and going down to Spreadsheet Fields. And you can pick one of these sort of uh, pre-packaged groupings if you want, where you know if you pick budgeted units, it just gives you your standard planned budgeted units. And those other ones do the same thing. But what I've done here is I've gone down to Customize. And I did pick budgeted units. I want to graph that. But in, in that will give me my bars, my bar chart graph. But to get the S-curve, we have to do the cumulative units. Okay, So we'll expand cumulative units. And we're going to do cumulative. I'm, again, keeping it simple. You could do actual with a remaining and all that kind of stuff. But we're just going to do budgeted. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know what cumulative units are, basically 
with cumulative units, we're adding the units and totaling up as we go. It's like a running total. So see, this week we have 6.4. So the cumulative is 6.4. The next week we did 40 hours. So we added 40 hours to the 6.4. The next week we did another 40, so we added that and we get a running total. So basically we're adding all that up. And that is the data that you need to graph your S-curve. It's a running total uh, type of situation. Okay, now P6 setup. One of the things I learned, I remembered to really graph this stuff, we need to get it into a format that Excel will um, will recognize, let's say. Notice here we've got 86.4H. That little H is going to give us problems throughout because Excel will not recognize this as a number. Okay, It'll say text and you can't graph text. So we need to turn H off. We can do that here under Edit, User Preferences, under the Time Units tab, where we have these check boxes here that says Show Unit Label. And just for, you know, just in case you want to do other things, we'll turn off the Duration Label as well. And that gets rid of the H or the D next to any values. Okay. Now, when we copy this stuff into Excel, we will be sure that Excel recognizes it as numbers. You're also welcome to add decimal places. I added one decimal place, and that's also under units, uh, sorry, under edit user preferences. But here's how we're going to extract the data from P6 and put it into Excel. Okay, we are going to select everything, and you can do that on the edit menu, select all, or you can do control A here, the quick key. Okay, you'll notice over here, it seemed like it didn't select everything. But again, if I do Control A, okay, it has actually selected everything. And now we're just going to do a copy. And again, copy is usually Control C, and you see it's it's grayed out here. But if you do a Control C on your keyboard, that will copy all the data. Okay. Now let's go over to Excel, and I'm going to open a new workbook. And just in the top left-hand corner, I'm going to do a Control V for paste, or I could just click paste. Okay, so there is my data in Excel. Now, um, Excel quick trip, quick tip. You know this. Double click here to expand all your columns. Actually, let's uh, highlight everything and then double click, and that expands all the columns to a viewable state. Okay, so there's all my data, and. Excel will now recognize these as values and not text. Okay, now to graph that graph, you notice if you look at our activities, we have the summary activities. Like these are the real activities, right? The ones, um, these are these white guys, but then we have these bars, right? The yellow, green, blue bars. And they're here as well. And I actually think that um, I'm going to use those bars for my graph because rather than graph all the details, I want to just graph one summary line so that we can see the whole thing, the whole graph for, say, operator or for electrician. Now let's go down here to iron worker or laborer has even more activities. Let's take laborer. Okay? So I want to graph the graph for laborer. So what I'm going to do is basically highlight the labor two lines, and I'm going to come all the way across. Okay, that should be the end. Now I want to highlight those two, but I also want to highlight the top line here as well. Let's just take line one. Copy. And just to keep it simple, I'm going to, again, open a new um, new worksheet, and we're going to paste line one in there, and we'll do it in two steps. So then we'll come here, down here and get the labor line. Copy over here. Great. Expand all the columns. OK, so we have the data now. It's a lot easier to take the data out of that spreadsheet into a new spreadsheet to work with 
in order to create the graph. But you don't have to. You could create the graph right in in that um, in this full spreadsheet. But I find it's a little bit easier to work with. Now, one of the other challenges we have is all of these empty cells here. Um, we need to put the value zero in them. So, like that. So there's a neat way to do that, which I've just discovered. So let's try this. We go here to find and select and go to special entry. And with go to special, you can actually have it select all of the blanks. Now, I think before we do go to special, we're going to, um, hold on. We're going to select the the whole area there, okay? Because I don't want I don't want this select all the blanks outside of that area, just in that area. So go to special, select the blanks, click OK, and now we're going to type zero and a special key combination to make it fill all of those blanks is going to be Control Enter, Control Enter at the same time. We get zeros throughout. Isn't that brilliant? Man, that's great. Now, it also did activity name. We don't need that. But um, all of this stuff is filled now. So that's great. Okay, so we have our two lines. The first line is the budgeted units line. The second line is the cumulative units line. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this first line, highlight it, insert um, a bar chart. Just a simple 2D bar chart. Okay, now I'll just leave the chart. Yeah. I'll just leave the chart here for the moment. But you can see it did its best sort of charting those values, but you can see my X time scale is not proper. So let's do this step by step. So we're going to right click in here and go into select data. And here, we're going to give our series a name. Okay, so here's series one. We're going to edit it. We're going to call it budgeted units. Okay, great. Now, let's go and do the other series. So add a new series, and it's going to be cumulative units. And then we're going to uh, go select it, basically, here. There we go. Select all the way across. Good. Hit this little button. Locked in. Good. Now, now we have our two series. Now, on the right-hand side, let's go and pick the x-axis labels, which are going to be my dates. Okay, so select the range. I tried to do it with keys and it didn't work very well. Okay, right to there. Click. Good. Okay, so now we have the proper labels. We have our budgeted units, our cumulative units. We'll click OK. And let's go back and find that graph. I dropped it over here. Okay, let's move this graph to a new uh, tab at the bottom, and then we can sort of work with it a little easier. Okay, so here's what we've got. It's not at all looking like it should yet. Okay, so some things are, some things still need to be tweaked a little bit. We want a line. You can see that we lost our line. And we want those bars. Um, so I think what happened is the, these bars are actually the data from the line. So let's highlight those and then right click and go down here to format data series. Okay, since since the line is going to use a different y axis than the bars, okay, so this will be the y axis for the bars and then for the line we'll have a y axis here. We're going to say this is a secondary series. So, secondary axis rather. Okay, good. So now things are looking better. Um, again, right-clicking on these orange bars, we're going to change the series chart type. Okay, And this screen is where you can really 
set things up you want so the way you want so you can see budgeted units is is going to stay on clustered column because that's the columns that we want and the cumulative units is going to go to a line graph And there we have it. There's the S-curve. So with the bar chart in the back using the left-hand axis and the S-curve using the right-hand axis, then um, we get a pretty good graph. And then you can put a title on this. I think it's, I think it's the laborer, right? Okay, there you go. Um, now, as you can see, it wasn't too, too complicated, was it? A few things we, we needed to remember was to take that H off because that was the big guffaw last time. And I, I like it that we put this thing into this um, new spreadsheet because it just sort of makes it a little bit easier to work with. But we still have that other spreadsheet over here. And so we have still all this raw data. So if you wanted to graph any any bits of this, you could easily you know, pick your operator and go graph that in the, in pretty much the same way. And once you have one graph set up, um, a lot of the ranges that we set in this graph, like when you do this sort of select data thing, you right click a thing and you go select data, a lot of the ranges are going to be the same, uh, but maybe just different columns. Okay, so as you build one, it can be pretty easy to copy and paste to build a second one. That's how you do S-curves in Excel. 